This is Dr. Parikh and I'm doing a video to orient you to Blackboard for statistics. This is fall 2016, um, but if you're watching this in other semesters, things might look a little different, but if I do a huge overhaul, I'll do a new video. Um, this is where you start your home page. It tells you if there's any announcements. So if there's any big date changes, assignment changes, uh, or like if the weather's pretty bad and you're not sure if I'm gonna hold class or not, this is where I'm going to put it in the announcements. I usually send out emails because students have told me they don't, they, they'd rather get it twice than not get it at all. Over here you can see assignments that are coming up. It's not showing anything right now. Um, I think because the course doesn't actually become available until August 29th. Let me put on the student preview. Uh, it should work for most of the course. I'll have to take it off to show you one or two things. Um, but yeah, so as a student, you'll see different information about the course in a snapshot right here. Start here is a great place to start. It's where this video is going to be. You can also find uh, some basic videos about how to use Blackboard if you're not, excuse me, I have hiccups if you're not familiar. You can also see Khan Academy, how to use Khan Academy. Um, Blackboard, this one I'll take away, but you, I do a little bit about Khan Academy because they don't tend to have uh, many of their own videos that I like as well. Um, so this is where you'll find just some basic information to get you started with the course. You can also see under here are quick links. So these are some things that I want you to be able to get to really quickly that you'll probably need a lot. Uh, so the syllabus, I've made it into a PDF so that it comes up right in the window instead of having to download the Word file. The links that are like actual, here's the entire web page, they still work just fine. Um, and this, so this has my basic policies. Every professor is a little different in what they expect. So this tells you things like, I take attendance, I take it right at start time. So it's good to be there at start time. I give information about assignments right at start time. Uh, and I talk about things like, um, my office hours, what you can do, what you can't do, um, emails. Sometimes I'll send you just a really short message and that's because there's either, you know, sometimes it's something that's right in the syllabus. And the cool thing about this electronic version is like I just hit control F and I can search uh, late. Oh, okay, apparently it doesn't work here. But if you download it, What's this? That's probably to, oh, that's to rotate it. That doesn't help. If you download it, you can search uh, right in here. Uh, it includes all the assignments and how much they're worth. The things that are highlighted are highlighted. Uh, usually it's a due date or a number of absences, things like that. It's to be really clear to you, but it's also so I remember to update it each uh, semester. Then we get to the course schedule. And the way that it's easiest for me to do the PDF these links don't carry over because they don't look like a website. Um, but that's okay because if you come over to the schedule, this is smaller. I was able to convert this. I have to do like two conversions to get it uh, and the formatting gets a little funky. But here the links work and it takes just a moment, but it'll take you right to where you need to go in Khan Academy. I have several videos that explain to you what Khan Academy is and what you need to do to use it. So I'm going to leave that be. And I make this as a checklist because there's a lot of assignments and a lot going on. And so I want you to be able to keep track. And the way I do the homework is I just do a big problem set, which is a printed out sheet with basically three to four chapters worth of homework in there. And so I leave you space to write down basically what problems I want you to do before the next class based on what we do. So everything here, this is designed to be what's due that day. So you need to read chapter one before you come in on the fifth and you need to uh, do these two Khan Academy activities. And sometimes they'll give you special information like this one might be a little harder than most. So try at least 10 of them. But if you don't, if you're not able to finish the whole tutorial to get the, you know, to get enough right in a row, that's fine but I wanna see you trying several problems, even though it's harder to figure out. Um, and sometimes they'll have those notes right in where you do them, uh, which I'll show you in a moment. 
So that's the schedule. Khan Academy, here's a link that takes you to Khan Academy and specifically to where you would sign up. Uh, you can see my name is here. Uh, you don't have to use your real name, but please use your real first name and at least the first letter of your last name. Um, because the way that it shows up, it's really tough for me if you're not, if I don't see your real name, at least that much. Um, and so you would enter the class code, which is right over here. So you would just copy this six letter code, uh, or you could just put my email sparik at caldwell.edu. And you'll add me as a coach, which means I'll be able to see the work that you're doing. And I apologize that you have to go and do things on another website. Sometimes there are technical issues. Sometimes uh, always make sure you're logged in because uh, sometimes someone will do the work, but they weren't logged in and it doesn't show. Um, this is especially easy to do when you're just watching videos. Um, but Khan Academy is free. It's completely free. All of it is free. It's really well set up, students like it, and it's free. If I were to use something through the publisher, you'd have to pay for it. Um, so it's not perfect, but it sure is free. The other link that I just clicked is how to schedule with me. Uh, it's a website you can book me. And so you come to my website. Sometimes I'll have special information, like there was one time I was in a walking boot and having trouble getting around campus. So I said, like, this is where I'll be for office hours. You can come meet me there. Um, if I have to change office hours for something like sometimes I get meetings that get scheduled during my office hours one week um, You can come and see that and you can uh, Or so so there's various information that I'll post there um, Normally, it's just kind of normal uh, here. You can see these are my normal office hours and sometimes uh, I'll put extra time like if I know I'm gonna be on campus Friday for some reason, I might open up a couple hours in case, uh, cause I really try to offer office hours that are spread throughout the week. Here you can see my normal week. Um, I try to offer little bits of time, lots of different places so that you can uh, find a time that works for you. And so you can meet with me for 15 minutes or 30 minutes more if I have it. And you just fill out a really quick form. You get an email confirming it. There's even a link I think that you can put it right into your calendar. Um, I get an email and it shows up in my calendar and uh, students really like it. They find it really easy. It cuts down on emailing to find a time. And also, you know that if you have an appointment, or even if it's during normal office hours, you know you're going to get priority. And if for some reason I have to cancel those office hours and reschedule them, I'll know that you wanted to meet with me and I'll email you to make that happen. Um, so that, those are quick links, syllabus schedule, Khan Academy and appointment booking. Uh, under course content, this is where you're going to do to do most of your work. So quick links are kind of reference things. Course content is where you go to do your work. And again, I have some uh, videos that are here, uh, some that are in start here, and you can really Google. There's a lot of videos to help you with Khan Academy and with Blackboard. Um, so this one is put on by Khan Academy. I also have ones that I've made. This one's by Blackboard. Um, and you go, it's, the class is divided into three parts for three tests. Uh, it was four, but honestly, I just wanted the extra class period, so I divided it into three instead. And it's really broken down by time. And so, for example, during one of our first classes, we're gonna do a, um, the skills pre assessment preview exam that's in the book. I have it so you can do it right here through Khan Academy to check your work. Um, it's a little long, which is why I give you, uh, I'll give you at least some class time to do it. You can only do it once, but you can save and come back later. Uh, and then for the first two chapters, I know it's tough to get the book right when class starts and I don't want to wait on anybody. Um, so it takes a little time to load because it's big, but I've made PDFs of uh, the first two chapters. Wow, that's taking a long time. I'm not going to wait on that. Um, and I do that really just as a favor to you while you get the book. I will not make PDFs of any other chapters because at some level I feel really ethically uncomfortable with that. But I don't mind doing it for the first two chapters to give you a little buffer time 
to get the funds or if you wanted to order it from somewhere that takes a little more time, that gives you some flexibility. After that, if you don't have the book yet, work with other students, ask around. Now we get to the Khan Academies. Khan Academy, uh, so again, make sure you're signed in each time. I have some instructions that talk, tell you. These are set up as assignments because that's how I get them to show up in the calculate or in the calendar for you. If it bugs you that it's showing up as being due or past due and you've already done it, uh, you can just click on it. And you can just under write submission, you can just like write done. And you can hit submit. And that'll make Blackboard know that you've already submitted that assignment. So it should at least, it shouldn't tell you that it's past due and uh, it won't really, you don't have to do that. It doesn't make a difference. I grade you based on whether uh, I, I can look through Khan Academy to see what you've, what your activity is. That's why it's so important to be signed in. Okay, so we can go back to assignments and quizzes. This will really walk you through everything you need to do. So it has, these are the same links that are in the syllabus, uh, in the schedule. And then there's also after we, so you do the Khan Academy before you come to class. And then after we've finished something, you do the quiz. There's a time limit of an hour, so don't just leave it open forever. Um, but you can open it, close it, come back to it. And the questions aren't the most difficult in the world, but they're meant to make you have to look in your book. Uh, and usually there's some extra credit points in there. It should be so that each one is worth 10 points, but there's often more than 10 questions. The others are just bonus questions. Like here's one that's technically worth extra credit and there's the other that's worth extra credit. Um, with the matching, they're just, they're really taken straight from the book key terms. And I just divide them up so there's not more than 10 in any one section. Um, so as you look, yep, you can leave it, that's fine. Uh, as you look, you just kind of, and the, for this one, uh, for this class, I just have the chapters kind of rolling together so there's not a million sub things to click. Um, so you just keep going down and then there's a copy of the problem set. You should get a printed copy in class also, um, but if you lose it or if something happens, you can access it through here. Um, and again, it's just as a reminder to help you know when it's due. And so each problem set, it comes up in, uh, oh, I'm sorry. If you wanna click on the thing, it's if you want the file, you click on it right there. And it'll come up. As so you can see, there should be enough space to, I try to leave enough space to do your work, but if you take up a lot of space, you can just attach extra sheets. Show your work. If it's anything other than simple multiplication or addition, you should be writing out the steps. You should write out the formula. That's how I know you didn't just copy the answers from someone else. Uh, and there should be answer keys in my office. You can stop by anytime during office hours if you wanna check. Um, I'm usually, I'm actually not too, too fussy. A lot of the homework questions will do in class. And this is kind of your study guide too. This gives you an idea of a pretty close idea of what's gonna be on the test. It won't always look exactly like this, but it should be pretty close. Um, so that's an important tool for you. And so it shows part one, part two, and part three actually has two different problem sets just because it's, uh, it's, five chapters all together, which just gets to be a lot do all at once. Um, and so I have C and D, but just one test. Um, so that's where you get those informations. Current topic presentation. Um, this is, I'll talk more in class and you can read about what it is, but basically you do a short presentation um, Using PowerPoint or some similar kind of presentation, um, you could use, you could do a Prezi with it if you want. Um, I think that's what it's called. Um, but you will need visual aids, so you need to do something. Uh, there's a rubric in here that tells you exactly what I'm looking for. One chart and one table. A table means it's something with rows and columns. A chart is pretty much anything else uh, or a figure or something like that. Um, 
The one place people tend to lose points is they don't have a table. They have lots of pie charts and bar graphs and things, but they don't have the rows and the columns. Um, you can come to office hours if you have any questions about it. Make sure that it takes up about the right amount of time. Um, and you need to have at least three discussion questions. Um, these are really fun. I like them a lot. I think they're a great way to start off each class. Um, they get great discussion and it's really a way to talk about how do we use statistics in real life? How do we look at a figure and understand what it means? Um, and I, it's really one of my favorite things about this class. And I would say it was probably one of students' favorite things too. You just upload, browse your computer, upload it in PowerPoint um, or something else. Make sure that you have APA style in-text citations and references. Uh, so each slide where you have data, you need to have a parentheses and the, the authors and year, and then you need a reference list. And I'm not, I'm not grading these as hard as I would like a Gen Psych 2 paper, um, but I need to see that it's there, that you have made a very reasonable attempt uh, that's pretty close. Uh, so you just browse, attach it, it's going to submit to the plagiarism check and hit submit. And that's how you'll turn it in and I will pull the presentation up for you. And we'll do a sign up in the first day or two of class. Um, so you can sign up. It says November 30th because that's just the last date. Um, but you'll, we'll do about one each class period. Research presentation, it is, uh, oh, I have got to fix that. I don't know where the research presentation went. Um, but this is a group project. You'll submit, uh, you can sign up or create, you can create a group or, uh, or so you go to the sign up sheets um, and you'll work usually in groups of three. Uh, if we're odd numbers, I'll allow either one group of four or a few groups of two. Um, and so the research presentation is where you do a more in-depth presentation on peer-reviewed journal articles. So it's a little more scientific than your current topic presentation. Um, it's a little more of a psychology topic, whereas current topic can be just about anything. Um, and it'll look very similar to this, where you just kind of, there's a description of it, and then you upload it. And I will fix that pretty much as soon as I finish this video, because I don't know where the content went. Um, other course, kind of, so groups is where you sign up. You have to sign up for your own group. If you're not signed up, I'm just going to put you in one. Uh, and then here there's PowerPoints. These are from the publisher. They're for either the ninth or 10th edition. They may not quite match what I do in class, um, but they give you, and you can see there's all the chapters, even though we don't do some of the chapters, uh, but they give you a good sense of what's important from the book. Students find the book a little intimidating even though it has lots of bold terms and things like that to help. And so the PowerPoints seem to help students make sense of what's important. I also highly encourage you to bring a separate sheet of paper to keep track of formulas for each chapter. Um, a lot of it, a lot of doing the stats as far as the math goes is just being able to do the formulas. Uh, data sets, there are some data sets that we'll use um, in class for different assignments. There's one, the body fat one you need for, um, for the problem set A. And then they, I also have a video where I talk you through how to enter data for t-tests because that's really confusing for a lot of students. Uh, and then under other course content, you can also get links to tables. You can use any unwritten on table during the test. You just have to bring in a copy. So here I have found some tables that I think are useful, but you can also photocopy the ones straight from your book if you find those to be more helpful. And as I, if I find other ones, I might post them here. Um, and here you can get a sense. Sorry, my computer's really slow because I'm uploading a video right now. Um, so here you can see it's just a PDF of a table um, and we'll talk about those as we go. Let's see, my grades, I can't really, I don't think I'll have anything to pull up because I'm in student mode. There we go. 
but you'll see it'll show uh, your grades on different things. And for most things, I'll also show the class average because I want you to know where you stand. Um, some of these, a lot of these are worth only a few points, and so it doesn't seem like that big of a deal to miss one or two. Um, but know that they do add up pretty quickly. Now I'm going to exit out of the student preview to show you the calendar because for some reason the calendar isn't working on the student preview yet. The calendar, I set up just about everything we do in class to have a presence on the calendar because a lot of students seem to use that to track and I want to, I really want to give you as many organizational tools as I can. And so you'll see occasionally there's something that's due actually in class like the skills assessment preview, that exam that I showed you, uh, that will do in class, or we'll at least start it in class, and then I'll give you some time to finish it after class as a homework assignment, but most things are due the night before class. Uh, and that just really helps me track to just have, say, let's have it be due the night before. Uh, I include, like for example, the stats exam is in here, you really don't need to do anything through Blackboard for it, but it's there to remind you what to bring. Uh, typically, I tell you, you can bring a formula sheet, one side of an eight and a half by 11 inch paper. And uh, a lot of students find that just making the formula sheet is a really useful part of their studying. Um, so you can go through and you can see pretty much everything is due. And for this class, you have several things due each week. It's a lot of little assignments because it's math, it builds on itself. You pretty much have to do it that way in order to learn. You have to work a little bit at a time to gain the knowledge. And then uh, our last exam will actually be in the last class period. And then we do the research presentations during the uh, actual final exam period, um, which gives us a little more time for it. So uh, the other one, these are just kind of extra things. Um, Oh, one thing I want to tell you about the calendar, if you come down and you see get external calendar link, uh, this is a really cool way if you use like a Google calendar or something like that to help you stay organized, you can pull stuff from your classes right on. And I just Googled like, let me see, I think it's like import, importing calendar from Blackboard and you can find lots of guides that help you figure out how to do that. Um, just on a side note, anytime you're stuck on how to do something with Blackboard or Khan Academy or Word or anything like that, usually a quick Google will show you some articles with screenshots or even videos that show you how to do it. So there's a lot of resources available for these things if you just search. Sometimes if you ask me a question and it's something that's, you know, what I'll do is I will go to Google, do a quick search, look to see that some of the results are what you're looking for. And I'll just copy and paste that search. Like I would just copy this and you could open it up and you'll see the search results because I want you to learn how to look for your own information. If you have any questions, you can email me or come to office hours. Again, I constantly try to improve my stuff. So some things might look a little different. Hopefully the research presentation has the actual assignment in there. Um, oh, now it shows up just fine. I have no idea what changed with that. Uh, probably I need to change to make the assignment available. Um, but at any rate, uh, so the research presentation, 70 points, and there's several things you need to do with this one. Again, your group or a representative can come to office hours. Um, you have a lot of flexibility and I'd like to have it a little bit before the exam period so that I can go into the room a little early, get all of the PowerPoints or Prezi's or whatever pulled up, um, and be ready to go pretty smoothly. And again, the, these are pretty interesting too. It's a nice way to break up exam finals week. All right. Thank you for watching. If you have any other questions, let me know. Bye.